In this lesson, I'll show you several examples on how to reduce ratios and write them in higher terms. Let's begin with a discussion on what a ratio is and how it differs from a fraction. A ratio is a comparison of two or more terms. And the difference between a ratio and a fraction is that a fraction is also a comparison, except that it's a comparison of two numbers only, the numerator and the denominator. So if you're asked what a ratio is, you say that it's a comparison of two or more values. With that being said, let's begin by learning how to reduce ratios. Question one reads, reduce each of the following ratios to lowest terms. In the first example, we have 80, and this colon reads two, so 80 to 35. We have to find a number that will equally divide into 80 and 35. Because both numbers end with a zero and a five, they're both divisible by five. So I'll divide this by five and divide this by five. Make sure you divide both. 80 by 5 is 16, and 35 by 5 is 7. There's no number that equally divides into 16 and 7, so this is its most reduced form. Let's try the next. 48 to 30 to 18. All three of these numbers are even, so we can divide each of these by 2. Now, of course, there are better options. For example, I can divide each of these by 6. Eventually, if you reduce it correctly, you will end up with the same answer. So I'm going to start with 2. 48 divided by 2 is 24, that becomes 15, and that becomes 9. All three of these numbers are also divisible by 3, so I'll divide each of these by 3, where I end up with 8 to 5 to 3. That's the lowest it can go, so we can move on to the next. We have 225 to 45. Both of these numbers are equally divisible by 5, but I know they're both divisible by 45. If I divide this by 45, I end up with 5. So I'll write down 45 and 45 here. So this divided by 45 is 5, and that divided by 45 is 1. Luckily, I knew that, and I was able to get 5 to 1. In our last example, we have 81 to 54 to 27. All of these are divisible by 9, and I know what you're thinking. They're also all divisible by 27. But since I thought of 9 first, I'll just use 9. So divide each by 9. I get 9, and here I get 6, and here I get 3. We're not done yet. These are all divisible by 3. This becomes a 3, a 2, and a 1. So now you know how to reduce. Sometimes you'll be asked to find the unit ratio, and that's when at least one of the numbers in the group of numbers that are being compared is equal to 1. By writing it out as a unit ratio, it makes the relationship between the numbers easier to understand. So let's make the four examples we just did into unit ratios if they're not already. Take for example, question three and four. We had a term that was one here, and we had a term that was one here. So these are already unit ratios. But what about these? How can I make 80 to 35 and this group of numbers into a unit ratio? It's actually quite simple. You find the smallest number in the group and divide each of the terms by that number. So here the smaller of these two numbers is 35, so I'll divide 80 by 35 and 35 by 35. 80 divided by 35, let's use our calculator, is equal to 16 over seven, and you can write terms as fractions, and you can also write them as decimals, it's up to you. 35 divided by 35 is one. So this represents the unit ratio for this example. As I mentioned, you can write this as a decimal if you like. So you can write it as 2.29 rounded to the nearest hundredths. 2.29 to one, but of course, this one is more accurate. The smallest number in this group is 18. So I'll divide 48 by 18, 30 by 18, and 18 by 18. This one is easy, it's a one. 30 divided by 18 gives us five over three or 1.6 repeating. I'll write down five over three. And 48 by 18 gives us eight over three. Now by all means, you can convert these into decimals, but it ultimately depends on what your teacher wants. Let's continue. This time I'll show you how to write equivalent ratios in higher terms. So this part is similar to what we just did above, except we're doing the opposite. Rather than reducing it, we're actually making it larger. 
So question two reads, state each of the following ratios in higher terms to eliminate the decimals from the terms of the ratios. So not only do they want it in higher terms, but they also want the decimals to be eliminated. In our first example, we have 2.5 to 3. And what you want to do is multiply both of these terms by a factor of 10. The reason why I chose a factor of 10 is because there's one number in the ratio that has one number after the decimal place. In our case here, five. So the amount of digits after the decimal place dictates how many zeros after that first. If that's confusing to you, it will become more clear in the next example. So if I multiply this by 10, I end up with 25. And if I multiply this by 10, I end up with 30. This right here is in higher terms and there are no more decimals. Over here, we have three numbers being compared. This one has one number after the decimal place, and these two both have two. So rather than multiply by 10, we multiply every one of these by 100. Notice that there are two zeros, and that corresponds to the amount of numbers after the decimal. So that becomes 125, 375, and 750. Over here, this ratio is written as a fraction, and that's fine. If your ratio has two terms, then you can write it as a fraction. So I'll multiply the top and the bottom by 10 because there's only one digit after the decimal, giving us 18 over 27. And over here, we multiply the top and the bottom by 100, leaving us with 1925 over 275. And there you have it. That is how to reduce ratios and write ratios in higher terms.